afternoon and welcome to Hollow Rock the Virtual Stage. I'm your host, the Trigger Rich Bontrager. Welcome for another daytime special edition. Yes, two days in a row, back to back, in the middle of the day. Uh, we have a great guest coming up and a great, great topic. You could not have a better topic for this part of the year. We're going to be talking about resilience today, so uh, don't go anywhere. But coming up, we have back in our regular normal slots, we have some wonderful guests coming up next week. Wednesday night, we're back at 8 o'clock Eastern time with How to Rock the Virtual Stage. Eli Marcus will be my guest, and Eli is the networker to the stars. He has worked with people from the A-list to music to rock to everything to dance. Uh, he's going to talk about networking, and not just networking. He's going to talk about how do you get to those high-level, amazing people that you want on your show, your podcast, and your special events. Uh, Eli Marcus will be with us next Wednesday night, 8 o'clock. Eastern time, get your tickets at event right for that. And then coming back on Monday the 14th, we're going to go on a special uh, Monday night edition, and we're going to do a little rock and roll on the virtual stage. We are going to have a speaker drummer, Mark Schulman. He's been the drummer for uh, Pink and many other celebrities. Uh, he's going to talk about overcoming stage fright. Think about this, a drummer who's afraid to be on stage. And now he's a speaker and an author himself. He's learned how to rock the virtual stage and rock the physical stage. And he will be with me on the 14th. That's going to be a special event on a Monday night. Join us at 8 o'clock Eastern time for that show as well. Remember, if you're new to how to rock the virtual stage, welcome. This is completely live today. There will be a replay. And this is for you to figure out tips and tricks to help you better rock the stage, whether it's the physical stage, the virtual stage, which is ever expanding, ever growing. And there's different obstacles on both platforms now. And also the world we live in, especially our topic today, there's a lot of things to overcome to keep your business, keep your careers, to, to keep your networks growing. You have to be on the virtual stage to get these things going. So we're going to talk about that today. How do you keep going forward? How do you keep being resilient with me? And today, Allison Graham is my guest. And Allison, speaker, author, inspiring hope, resilience, and connectiveness through problem-solving framework. She has a whole problem-solving framework to help you get unstuck and uh, keep moving forward. She guides leaders to deal with obstacles better so they can be free day-to-day -day for emotional freedom, more mental capacity freedom. She helps leaders, especially the high achievers, high achieving leaders to find fresh new tools insights to cope with today's marketplace and we know today's marketplace is not what it was just a few months ago at all she also has the results from the ultimate resilience program she will talk about that today what is the ultimate resilience program how can it help you empower you and equip you welcome allison graham to the how to rock the virtual stage good afternoon allison good afternoon it's awesome to be with you well, Rocking the stage. I feel yeah. like we should have some rock music to bring us in. <laughs> yeah, actually, on the post-production, we do have a really rocking in intro. We, we just okay, well, I can dance. I yeah, can there, dance there we go. We, we do, the, do we do the Cabbage Patch, or what do we do now? <laughs> I don't think we do Cabbage Patch. I, <laughs> so That's awesome. The crowd is trickling in. We've got people saying hello. They're all saying thank you for being with us already, Allison. Uh, so... Tell us a little bit about where you come from and how you got to this place of speaking on resilience, speaking on working with leaders that are stuck, uh, and then we'll keep diving deeper. But who is Allison Graham and how did you get here? Well, I, I managed to go through a decade of hell like so many of us do, right? We go through a time in our lives where it feels like the punches just won't stop. And when you do that for an extended period of time, you can get to a point where you just give up or you start playing small in your life or, you know, you're just unhappy. And I, I remember I was actually sitting uh, across from my doctor uh, is a neurologist at the hospital in Toronto. And he's like, Allison, here's the deal. You're going to have to reevaluate your expectations for your life. And you're never going to work full time again. You are like, I think at this point you need to go on disability and, uh, this is, you're going to be on medication for the life pain's not going away. And I'm like, that's not the answer I'm looking for, you know, through the ugly cry and the screaming. And the, you read you my know, bio, like, you read my bio. You're just ripping for my life, aren't you? <laughs> I am. And see, we all go through this, but if you looked at social media, you had no idea 
And like when this was starting, it was social media was just getting built. So it wasn't like it is now, but today, like people are looking like they're rock stars and they're struggling behind. And what I really wanted to do is I wanted to open the conversation so that we can be more, uh, I don't know if authentic is the word, but just more okay with the crap behind the scenes and what we're facing in the front. That's my goal for people. This is going to be an amazing conversation, you guys. This is absolutely going to be amazing because just to set this up for you, what, what I, I, so my five last five years have been a nightmare. Uh, divorce while going through a liver failure and then liver transplant. Your comment by your doctor saying your life now changes, disability, things you once did you can't do. Um, I'm like you. I'm like, don't tell me I can't do that. <laughs> do not tell me what I can do. You watch me. And so, you know, it was, he actually said though something so magical because when I was resisting, he said, well, then you need to figure out how to be resilient. So that's where and it all began. That's where it began. But I didn't know what that meant. Like I thought of uh, resilience as like the Olympic athletes. And I'm like, I'm not trying to win a gold medal here. I'm trying to get out of bed. I'm trying to keep my business alive. I'm trying to like, you know, not lose it. Like I was in so much pain from the surgeries and so many injuries and people in my life dying and grieving, but trying to like go, 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 go. And, and still keep up with the Joneses. Like who are the Joneses anyway? Like why, and why do we like them so much? You know, it's uh, and it was a lot of, a lot of push and collapse push through, you know, and that's why when people say, you know, you got to power through power through, I'm like, actually, I think that's your fastest path to burnout. Yeah, it is. So, boy, there, there's just gonna be so much here. We have an hour, <laughs> the pack is on. By the way, we, we have uh, people from Texas saying hello to us today. Uh, Hi, Texas. And we, we, we have someone who I know who just chimed in, um, 61 years old in a few days, and the doctors have always tried to place their expectations on me. I've been in chronic pain for 45 years and just getting out in bed is a huge uh, feeling. That's why she's here. And so, she's here. Yeah, and, and so, so you have people living- Dev is my new hero. That Yay, know Dev, pain. she's a rock star. <laughs> she is a rock star. And yeah. so now let's, to, let's step into the real world for a second before we really dive deep. Add everything that we just talked about and bring COVID shut down and everyone rewriting their life. Yeah. So we all got the call. Your life that you had is not your same anymore. Exactly. Go do it. Add, add that to this puzzle piece. What is it like right now with your message of, of resilience? How important it is for people to really get this from business, the personal, the marriage, the kids in high school, everything. How important is this? You know, for years, I've been trying to say to people, resilience is the foundational tool that will make you stronger, more productive, happier in your life. And, you know, especially with the bigger corporate clients who I used to work with a lot with the networking and business development, where they really invest a lot of money and time. Uh, the resilience was like, yeah, that's a good idea. But it wasn't urgent because everything was pretty good, right? Like if you showed up to work and you, you kind of did a good job or, you know, most of the companies I work, they expect you to do a very good job. Um, you were okay. And then and, and the, the humans instinctively are resilient and we wouldn't be here if we weren't. So, you know, trying to teach somebody a skill that we already inherently are seems a little bit sort of backwards in, in many ways. However, I believe we can take the resilience, the, the instinct of resilience, bring some structure to it so that we can apply it to our day so that we can like not get caught up and be resilient to the day-to-day -day trappings, the stress, the drama, the, the storylines that we create in our head, the excessive worrying, the procrastination, all of that piece. Resilience is the answer to figure out how to deal with it. And so normally on a team, what happens is you have one or two people in the, in the circle who are going through a significant adversity at any one time. And what COVID did was it put us all on the exact end, like on the edge of the exact same cliff. Yeah. And so now it's like, okay, 
the tools we had before where people would bury their feelings of grief, where they would come back to work too soon after a crisis, where they would uh, not want to deal with the feelings. So they would just get locked in busy, busy, busy culture. And like, I'm going to go, 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 go. Like all of that is gone. Cause you were like, you went and you just hit this brick wall and it was, okay, what do we do? And that's where the instinct kicks in. So we all like, you know, we get through it. Like as long as you didn't pass away, like you're going to keep going. My hope is to help people make that a prettier transition to so go from. Yeah. No, no. So, 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 so we're gonna get those tips and tricks insights. Someone else dropped into the chat box here. Uh, it's tenacity. Uh, be, 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 before rock the virtual stage, I've been speaking for years on defying the odds. Uh, so it, it's, it's, it's this whole similar thing that everyone here is already getting. I'm going to launch a poll for everybody. I want to hear some of this from everybody. Uh, right. and then we're going to break down into some more pra real practical tips, yeah. but when it comes to resilience, what helps you bounce back and advance? Is it your <laughs> prayer meditation? Is it your exercise? Is it music? Is it fresh air being on nature? Uh, is it you dive deeper in the work, like Allison was just saying? Or is it family, friends? What are one of those things that helps you bounce back? Everyone take a vote while we continue the conversation is. So this whole bounce back resilience thing, is it mental? Is it emotional? What is it, Allison? And how do we begin to shift it? It actually needs to be a combination of all of the above. And here's why, because a lot of times when I first started looking for resilience advice, I got really, really frustrated because a lot of it wouldn't work. And, you know, there's a lot of talk around mental toughness and mindset. Yes. And physiology trumps psychology all day long. So people who say you've got to power through or you've just got to suck it up, buttercup, like, you know, I went did a workshop <laughs> with a, a group of managers and this one guy says, uh, you know, when my wife comes home and she's complaining about a tough day, I just tell her to build a bridge and get over it. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't think those are the days you're getting extra snuggles. <laughs> no, no, I don't think so either. Right. But all of those things, like if you're sitting in chronic pain and you have neuropathic pain and you feel like there is a knife that's twisting into your pelvis, you know, the suck it up buttercup philosophy is not going to work. It just isn't. So it's going to hurt. So it actually needs to be a combination. And, and I think we'll get into um, that actual framework of the problem solving network. But before we do, one thing I want to say is I know you're and I know you're doing this, I think, to set me up. Uh, or who, me? Uh, who, who, who me? maybe, but the term bounce back, let's talk about this term. And actually it's on the cover of a magazine prevention magazine. I picked it up off the, the newsstand a couple weeks ago. Everybody uses it and we need to stop. And here's why the very notion of change is that what was no longer exists. So as I was sitting there, ugly crying and screaming to my doctor to say, no, 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 you have to take me back before the surgeries, before the people who died, before I want my old life back. I recognize that my search and my quest for getting back to the way it was, was actually time wasted in my ability to heal and process what is and what the future will be. And so every time we say bounce back, we actually do a disservice to ourselves on our ability in order to be re resilient and move forward. So, so I'm going to encourage more... people to delete. So, so bounce back's not it. So is it more that we're more pliable, more adaptable, more... Well, bounce back. Well, first of all, why are we bouncing? We're humans. We're not balls. <laughs> but... It implies that we're we're gonna stay stuck in the past and we're we want to get back to the way it was. And that's the issue. What we need to be is confident and feeling a sense of control and joy and peacefulness despite the chaos around us right now. So it's more about resilience is more about being able to accept and adapt to and like deal with what is happening in this exact moment and setting ourselves up for the best future we could have. That's oh, I like the key. that. That's 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 good. 
That, that, that can be played on a loop a few times right there. Let's loop it. <laughs> Here is the result of our poll. Let's just have you speak into this for a second. I'm going to share these back. And it looks like, you know, the prayer and family and friends, the prayer meditation, family and friends seem to be a little bit ahead. But as you look at those results, does this surprise you from what you coach, from what the people you work with? Or is this kind of the way it rolls? It doesn't surprise me at all because we all have different tools that require. What does surprise me about this is not one person has said they use music as their tool. I do. I do too. It's the easiest, fastest way to change your, your state is to put on a song that pumps you up and gets you going and have a little dance party. Like even when I'm doing virtual workshops with my clients, right? Businesses, I'll have everybody get up and I'm like, I don't care if we're looking at your belly. It's all right, <laughs> you know, have a dance party because our, you know, our minds can only absorb what our butts can endure, right? So like get up, like when you're working, you can't like just sit there all day long. And when we went to offices, if you had that in, um, in your past, you know, there was that natural up and down motion where when we're at home, you can just sit here and that's not healthy. But music is a great way to get you pumped. Someone just jumped in and said, 70s rock and roll. That's the, 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 that, that's the go-to. So if you have a genre, maybe it does help energize and get you going. But music has helped me because then it touches the mind, the yeah. heart, the soul, and it penetrates in a different way than other things do. Not that nature and things don't, but it's always one of those things that helps me get resilience and empowers me. Yes. And knowing, so part of it is knowing what works for you. So, and, and knowing what works for you, regardless of what the circumstances are around you. So what worked before? So the people who buried themselves in work and would just, you know, it, and I call it a classic, like the gotta go technique. And I used to do this all the time. I don't like the feeling over here. So I've got to go over here. Right. And this is, you know, such a, a big thing with our phones, right? People who, you know, aren't really great at processing their emotions. You may notice this in ourselves and we all do this to avoid in some, uh, some respect, but I notice it and I'll be like, uh, I'm embarrassed or I'm feeling anxious about something. And so instead of sitting with that emotion and letting it process, I'll actually grab my phone to call somebody or to look at social media. And actually, that's really, a, I don't want to use the judgmental word bad, but it's bad. <laughs> like it's not healthy, right, for our system because emotion is, you know, uh, energy and motion. So we need to give it the flow. We need to be able to sit with it and then it can dissipate. Because if we don't, if we don't process the grief we're going through, then it do not discount the fact that we are grieving the way you life used to be. We are not going back to a pre-COVID world. It'll we'll go to something, but it's not going to be as free as it was with you know concerts and mosh pits and maybe or maybe it will be. I don't know. We don't know. It and so we have to grieve that. But if we don't sit and process those emotions and really uh, look at it from all different perspectives mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, we have to have it all in order, you know, going back to your other question, then we're just going to get stuck and it's going to brew up as, you know, stress related disease. So what are some of the tips of actually breaking through now that we've kind of looked at the, the symptoms, we've looked at some of the mental emotion, give us some kind of how to some let's, let's get the ball rolling positive again for you. Yeah. Okay. So first thing I always ask you to do is say, what's the real issue? So when you're feeling stressed, when you're doing this, because often we're not solving for the right issue. Okay. So let me tell you a little story about the ice cube that became the snowman. So imagine the tasks you have to do on a day-to-day -day basis as ice cubes, little obstacles you get, maybe they're a little bit bigger ice cube. Your job is to melt them as efficiently and effectively as possible. The sooner you do, the sooner you can get back to the rest of your life, which is really just a whole bunch of other ice cubes. But beside us, you've got these ice cubes and now you have a great big pile of snow. And this snow is represented by misplaced emotion, negative storyline, and barriers to performance like worry, judgment, complaining, not setting boundaries, not saying no, procrastination, you name it, 
there's a whole long list of them. So what we do is we take these ice cubes that just need to get done and we go and we pack them in the snowbank. And all of a sudden now we've covered up with a little misplaced emotion. So let's say you're feeling very fearful for your future. You're not sure about your business. You're feeling frustrated about, you know, the technology on your virtual stage. And your child comes up to you and says, hey, mommy, daddy, can uh, we go out and play catch? And you snap at that child. It's misplaced emotion. Deflected because you're not processing the emotion properly. And then we add a little negative storyline on. Let's say you've got to do the dishes. I mean, the dishes to its own end, right? And you walk into the kitchen and you're like yelling at somebody in the house, hey, who didn't, who left all these dishes here instead of putting them in the dishwasher? Right. And then we start adding on and let's say um, you have to file your taxes. Right. And so instead of just those are just melted ice cubes that have to be melted, we got to sort things. we got to figure it out. We probably should have done it all year long, you know, all of that. But then you procrastinate on it and you start watching movies and then you go out for a drink with a friend or you virtually do. And then you are, you know, another week has gone by. So now all of a sudden melting the ice cubes, which is doing the taxes, has become a month long stress completely unnecessarily. And so all of a sudden you have a snow boulder that can be the bottom of a snowman. So that's the ice cube that became the snowman. So the very first piece of the rapid fire resilience rundown is to always look and say, what is the real issue? What is the ice cube that I'm really truly dealing with? Void of emotion, void of storylines like, oh, this is the worst thing that's ever happened. And then, you know, without the worry, procrastination, et cetera. That's, the second, you know, yeah, that's is that good? Yeah. yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Are we getting comments here? Yo, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, 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 we, we are. And so to just keep going because I, and, and again, so I'm thinking of the iceberg floating in the water. We've, yeah. we've all seen the illustration. We see the top, but there's way more, double, triple more underneath the surface that, that that's really the damage. That's really where the train wreck is, the boat wreck. So yeah. you're, you're kind of saying the same thing, that this is all kind of down here, even though it's looking like it's up here. Right. Well, and even taking it a step further, it's it doesn't need to be there. Like this is the stuff that the snow causes the destructive stress. And the issue is, is that we manufacture it through habit, through pattern, through the human experience. And what I'm trying to say to people is blast the snow away. Stop turning ice cubes into snowmen. Because if you look at our capacity and we only have so much capacity to do, to be, to feel, to exist, to accomplish, and we start putting in ice cubes, it's really quite easy. You know, we can, we can achieve a lot more, but if we take an ice cube and we're putting in a snow boulder and we're pulling it into ourselves and we got to deal with that, that's a lot harder to deal with. And it just makes everything, it's almost like reverse resilience. It's like, if we stop creating snow boulders, we don't have to be as resilient because we don't have as much crap to deal with. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, 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 it's like that bag you're hauling that you really don't need to be carrying anymore. Let the bag go. It's, it's right. really kind of that same philosophy. So also with, with, with this, and, and I'm just kind of wondering because so, so many people, and you, you, you touched on it briefly, we're banging our head against the virtual stage. We're banging our head against what they view as small, limiting, or we're doing technology and we're trying to do our podcasts, webinars, cooking shows. And it's like, it's just not the same. The resilience factor, this is a lot of energy now to do these and do these well. Yeah. Talk about the resilience of what it means to be on the virtual stage here. And what are some of the tips you can give people because we have speakers, authors that are always with us here. How do you be resilient here day after day? <laughs> do you mean, how, how do you not let the technology completely ruin your interview? Yeah. <laughs> uh, those late nights toiling. So this comes back to what's the real issue, right? Because a lot of times the reason we get frustrated with technology is we're rushing it. We're not getting the right details. We're um, using the wrong thing. We don't have the patience. We're adding on the worry. We're making this huge story. So we have to strip all that away. And sometimes with technology, like you got to have somebody who you can go to, to be your call person. You know, early on, I think, um, 
you know, with the everybody creating this stages and, and Rich, like the work you're doing is so critical to help speakers, but not just speakers, like professionals, every person who's showing up on camera in this virtual marketplace, like we're how many months into this pandemic, even if we have a vaccine and miraculously everybody is like better and we're just right back out there. I don't think the virtual stage is going away. No, and no, it has never gone away. And you're right. Every not. industry is now affected. Every industry is on this in some fashion or needs to be on this. Yes. And with that, like it's, you need to get it fixed now. Like if you're the person who is looking at a camera that is showing half your ceiling, like you need rich right? <laughs> like to fix that for you. And so I think part of resilience is being able to ask for help and knowing like we want to, we want to uh, test enough, like, you know, so that we're not unempowering, uh, that's the wrong word, but we want to empower ourselves to learn the technology. We also, though, have to know when it's time to call in an outside source and to call them and invest in being able to do that. Um, so there is all of that. What's Alan saying? You need Alan to fix your audio. Yes, yes, yes yeah. And and Alan and I are talking audio. Alan uh, is an audio engineer with incredible stuff. And there'll be some stuff in 2021 that you will hear about Alan more. But yeah, so okay, now I need Alan. Re- I so- need Alan. I need to know how to get my Sennheiser microphone that's really great for my Canon M50 into my MacBook Pro. So we're going to talk about Alan. that offline. I can hook you up with Alan. Uh, all right. <laughs> So, but, but no, that's a great example of resources now. Resilience yeah. involves resources, whether they're products, whether they're people, whether they're communities, whether these groups we all now get in, resilience involves beyond ourselves, right? Right. So, and it, it does. So I, we have so many places. I know we're on a tight time crunch, no, but let's keep going through this list. So the rapid fire resilience rundown. Now we won't get through all of them now, but I'm gonna give you the overall. So we figured out the, the, the piece around the ice cube. What's the real issue? Then we wanna look at that and decide what's, the, what's within my control or out of my control. The next piece is critical. And this is all about the first step of the, situ- uh, the problem solving framework, which is situational awareness. So we need to get crystal clear on the situation that we're trying to solve. So whether it's as simple as figuring out, you know, how to get your camera angle right, or it's trying to figure out how to put your revenue back on track for 2021, doesn't matter, same thing. We gotta look at the real issue. And then is it a task, an obstacle, or an adversity? See, a lot of people will go through I remember when I did my very first keynote on resilience. And the night before, I thought, you know what? I'm going to go figure out how stressed out I used to be. And I went online, and I did what they call a stress test. And a stress test takes all of the stresses that exist in your life, and it provides a numerical value to them. So you add it up and you can figure out how stressed you are. Why not? So I did, thinking back to that worst time that I told you about, the people who are passing away, my injuries, my move, et cetera. And I went through the list and my score was 734. The legend said, if you have a score over 330, seek professional help immediately. So, so it was like it was the red off. flag was going, the alarms are going off and everything for you. That's right. And so the, the issue with this, though, is that it perpetuates the fact that everything that goes wrong is a stress. When in actual fact, just because something goes wrong does not mean we need to react in a stressful way. So, okay. so, so then is this so, management? Is, is this partly management skills into it is. It's it's mental discipline in many ways. It's emotional discipline. It's so once you understand, is it a task, an obstacle, or adversity? You can figure out that what you need to do next. And adversity, you need to feel the emotion. You need to heal. And from adversity, like then obstacles come, right? And the obstacles. Our goal with an obstacle is to solve them as efficiently as possible. Like if we were walking on a path and there was a log in front of us, that would be considered an obstacle. 
So our job is to figure out, do we go over it, under it, around it, blow it up, move it out of the way? What do we need to do? We don't sit on the log, right? And hug the log and go, log, I can't go on. You're in my path, right? We have to just yeah. figure out how do we get past the log? No emotion, no you know, big, long, dramatic story to go with it. And then the tasks, we want to figure out how do we most efficiently do them? So that's the first piece of that problem solving framework is the situational awareness. The second piece before we get to solution is the self-awareness, figuring out how am I reacting to the situation and potentially how am I making the situation harder to solve because of my patterns and behavior? And that comes back to the snow. Okay. So even with chronic pain and nerve pain, and by the way, I am so proud to say I am 100% medication free um, to deal with my nerve pain. I mean, I did just have some robaxacet for an injury on my hip because I overworked out <laughs> a little bit. So I'm not against medication, but I am living a full life. I'm back to full-time employment, like, you know, um, as full-time as a speaker really is. Uh, but I'm able-bodied again. So, right. so grateful. And that's all mental, emotional thing. But in the days when I'm like, I've got pain and then I am dramatic about the pain. I used to be like, oh my God, this is like, just the words I was using were so defeatist. And so like, I'm never going to get to work full time again. I'm never going to be able to drive myself to Toronto again. I'm like, you know, and we use those words and I guess those words, our brain does not have a sense of humor. Mm-hmm. It takes it as legitimate. Like if you said, oh my gosh, Allison, it's a disaster. I would be like, oh my God, what's wrong? How, are we okay? And you're like, I just spilled coffee on my shirt. Your but it's stress the end of the world. levels. Are exactly the same. And look at this. Jared is saying, anytime we use never, always, we are in a false story. Absolutely, Jared. Thank you for that. Absolutely. Alan, CBD, uh, we can talk about uh, different options offline um, for sure. Let me jump uh, in for a second. We're, we're going to have you do part three here in a second, but we're going to okay. do our second poll. While I'm doing the second poll, you're going to cast your votes and stuff. We're also going to start moving people in. In the second half, you you get to ask your questions. Uh, real okay. time interactive with Alice. I mean, there's so much to do, but we want to get this third part in here. But to answer yeah. this question, everybody, as I do some technical stuff here, is on a scale of one to 10, how hard has 2020 been for you to be resilient? Scale of one to 10, how hard has 2020 been on you to be resilient? Allison, keep going and tell us more about this amazing step-by-step -step process here. Awesome. So really we wanna do situational awareness, getting crystal clear on what's happening. Then we do the self-awareness and the key to self-awareness because it'll go into judgment very easily. We wanna use, come from a place of curiosity. So keeping that in mind, that's the key to good self-awareness. Then we go into solution activation. Solution activation, when you have cleared out all of the snow becomes very, very easy to do surprisingly <laughs> easy to do this. Oh, it's so great to see your faces. You're popping up on my screen. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, so then we get into the solution activation and, and I have some principles around this. Uh, one of the greatest things uh, you can do is to think about the second response, not the first. So especially when we're dealing with barriers to performance. So what I mean like this, uh, by that is this, Imagine if you're a worrier and you're like, oh, Allison said worrying is causing me unnecessary stress. It is bringing me down. It's I can see how it's churning up parts of my life. OK. And you say, well, you know what? I'm never going to worry again. I don't know if we're PG or not. <laughs> you, you can feel free. This is like yes. cable, this is like cable TV. <laughs> OK. Yeah, of course you're going to worry again. You have had decades of perfecting the pattern of worry. But here's the thing. What if you worried about uh, an upcoming client event or a presentation or a meeting or something for three days in the past? And I could help you get it down to an hour. That's the key. How do we, how do we interrupt those patterns faster? 
And anyway, the solution activation is there are like four principles, but I know we want to get into question and answer. No, again, that, that helps tee things up for Q&A now. Now people get enough information. And then again, you see the chat box is blowing up here today, which is great. People are fully into this. We're going to look at the poll here, and then we're going to allow you guys to turn on cameras, turn on microphones. We'll let you, but here's, here's the results of where this crowd is. And look at this, Allison. Six and seven, the highest mark. Just a little bit over that 50-50 mark. People are saying, yeah, 2020 was a little bit rougher than I thought. Yeah. Well, and, you know, the person, uh, you know, who is a four, well done, uh, that you're, you're because uh, I think it's like a reverse, right? If you're high on the scale, that that means you're feeling finding it really stressful. And then here's the thing. There is nothing I want to do that's ever going to minimize that reality. The, the thing is, sometimes what we try to do, and always well-meaning, right? Like imagine if somebody were in front of you and they're crying and they're really upset and you're like, don't cry, don't cry. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And the truth is that's not helping them be resilient. That is helping them deflect from the reality of the situation. And I think we need to validate. We need to feel validated that we're in the middle of the suckage. But that just is real. Because- that it is very real. Absolutely, 100% real. And we have to be able then to go, okay, when we accept I'm in the the suckage and we name the emotions we're having, like I'm exceptionally scared about where the money is going to come from. I'm terrified that I am not sure how to move forward or how to do this, right? If we actually accept those, then we can look at it and then we can go, okay. I'm scared. What's the real issue? What are the facts that I know? What about this is within my control? What about it is out of my control? Which parts of what I'm afraid of are the tasks that need to get done, the obstacles I need to find solutions for, and the adversities that I am facing that I need to heal from and grieve, right? Like it all works together. Then it's the self-awareness. How am I reacting physically? What am I, how am I carrying that stress, that fear? Where am I feeling it in my body? Is there a way I could, you know, put on some music, jump around and change that state so I could feel more optimistic, right? What is the uh, mental, what is the storyline I'm telling about the situation that's causing the fear? What is then the emotional byproduct of that? Because our thoughts dictate and influence our emotion. And then what are three ways that I could, three tasks I could actually take that might solve this or that could move me in the right direction? Now, that's a great takeaway right there, everybody. What are three things? Say that again. Three ways, three three things. Steps. What are the next, what are possible three steps? And here's why I choose three. Any more than three, it's too many. You're going to get stuck in the loop of trying to figure out how to do something. Any less than that, and if we fail or number one in the first idea we have doesn't work, then we feel defeated. So people, for example, who worry, I will say, okay, all I need you to do is when you notice the sensation that you're caught in the worrying loop, I want you to force yourself to write down two alternatives to the catastrophic worrying one that you have. So people don't worry that they're going to win the lottery and what they're going to do with all the money. (laughs) Right? No, I guess not. No, they they probably don't. They're worrying about what if I lose this client? What if this, like, what if this presentation goes poorly? So when you get caught in that loop, I want you to then start looking at two other tracks what if this presentation goes amazingly well right and i say this that leads to this what if this presentation i do pretty good nobody sees it anyway right 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 and so what it does is it allows our brain to see that there might be an alternative that there there might be a way to detach from the worst case scenario and so i come from a long line of warriors and i'm you know, uh, in my family. And so I had that habit as well. And now I don't Like I'll catch myself starting to worry. And I go, Oh, wait a second. And I go through the the questions. Right. And I, I do it myself, but I'm also like, okay, I'm worrying. What are three different stories that I could be doing? This is the story I'm writing. And my brain is fixated on what's one that I could release. 
what could be another alternative? So right there, let's pause. Let's open it up for everybody else. By the way, Alan just chimed in. COVID has been a blessing and a curse. I totally agree. Great things have happened. Great disastrous things have happened. It's been a blessing and a curse. But now we're going to open it up for you guys. Uh, open up your mic. Uh, briefly just say, hey, my name is Bob or whoever. And then ask your question. Let's see how many questions we can roll through here in the second half of the show quickly. So who wants to go first? There's always that little pause of, I, I, I want to, but I don't dare open up that microphone. I'll go first. Hi, Allison. Hi, Rich. Hi. Jared Brick. Hey there. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the, um, the overwhelm of always feeling like you're not doing enough of your day. I had this conversation with my coach yesterday, and it was like, I don't even have a mental model of what catching up to head or neutral looks like there's always more for me to do there's always I could spend 24 hours a day working yeah. on my own business so how the hell do I create a mental model of I've done enough I've hit my goals and not just checklists yeah you know? Jared that's oh a great gosh, question yeah because I'm I'm hearing that every day Jared so you're not alone right there Allison what would you say to that here's why I love this question is because of the way you phrase it like the, the list always goes a hundred percent. The reality is like, it's not a to-do list. It's a to-do circle, right? So if we're constantly chasing the end of the list, we will by default always have a level of stress in our lives. That is uh, you, like, you're just chasing the impossible. So the first piece, the mental model the mental discipline is the recognition that the list is a circle that is never going to end. So it's an ongoing piece of your life. And mm -hmm. so that sh little shift um, can start to, to release the brain a bit that you're not failing by not getting it. The other piece of it is in the morning or the night before each of your days is figuring out what are the three things that absolutely must happen to move my business forward, to move my life forward today and look at the prioritization of them. Uh, I actually have a program online called Take Back Your Weekends, and it is all about letting go of the overwhelm and the stress and the to-do uh, the list that doesn't end. And one of the things I found most helpful for my clients over the years has been to bucket the priorities. So here's the, you know, a list is like long, like it just keeps going. And instead, I want you to look at the six buckets of responsibility that you have in your business. So for me, they're uh, sales, marketing, um, product development, right? And creation, like that creative piece, admin and personal, okay? Oh, and then client service, obviously, right? And so what I'll do when I'm looking at and you put in the different things that have to happen in all those areas. So then I put on the hat of, I'm gonna serve my clients in this moment. And I look to the clients and I go, the client little bucket, and I say, what do I actually have to happen? The other piece, and I know because we're quick on this, but I have to show you something. I didn't put on my iPad, so I can't do this on my iPad. And actually the idea of that phraseology of list to circle just like blew my mind away. Just, just that phraseology right there. You just reconstructed that whole stress right there of you're absolutely right. It is a circle. It is. Did I just gloss over that little bit? Well, no, no, but I, I was just going to say, if no one else says anything else, I mean, that that is gold right there. That's a mental shift 100%. of list to, yeah, we are forever chasing the gerbil wheel. Yeah, 100%. And we will always do it because that's actually life. And so part of this is figuring out our perspective, like it's about changing our perspective of the task and that's the ice cube. So if we're adding a layer of guilt around the fact that I'm not getting everything done in a day onto each ice cube, you've already got a snowball, like before you're even out of the gate, right? The other thing is, so if you have a project, let's say you've got a speech to do. I don't know, Jared, what you do for a living, but let's just pretend this is the case. Mm -hmm. So if you put that on a to-do list, honestly, it becomes quite overwhelming. 
because you're going to procrastinate on that because I'm going to guess if you have to write a speech from scratch, it might take you, I mean, it depends where you're at, but let's just for giggle, say it takes you 10 hours. I don't know if it would take you that long, but whatever. So instead of putting that on your, in your circle, what I would recommend you do is go, okay, I've got to choose a topic. I've got to uh, create an outline. I've got to, um, you know, write the slides. Now I'm just making these up here, okay? And I've got to uh, do the promo materials. And then from here, I'm gonna do template, right, for the master slides. And then I'm gonna do, um, uh, you know, my font choice. Like, it doesn't matter, I'm just putting things in. Mm -hmm. Now, within our circle, what we've done is these are going to take you five minutes to 15 minutes. And if you are overwhelmed by a project, okay, I'm going to encourage you to put the project out and break it into as many five to 15 minute chunks as you possibly can, because then we're going to take those five to 15 minute chunks and put it into our circle. Okay. And then it's like, and sorry, that was a highly technical term for checking things or uh, noise for checking things off the list. That was wonderful. I love the sound effects. Yeah. So that, because this, I'm oh, sorry, here, this is overwhelming. Yeah. This creating a master's lie template is not overwhelming. Yeah. And so like too we small that, to fail. It reminds me of too small to fail. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah, perfect. Great. So that is the, so I've, I've shared three things with you. Number one, perspective. The to-do list is never going to end. It's a to-do circle. We need to detach from that. Four things. Uh, setting the priority. What are the three to five things that are the priority for today? separating the circle, I call it the circle, into our different um, buckets. So clients, marketing, sales, admin, personal, project creation, okay, or creative work. Mm -hmm. They could be very different for you, uh, depending on what you need. But this is what I do with my coaching clients when they get overwhelmed. And that's a lot of what I work with people on is their stuckness. And, you know, I had one client who would call me at 10 o'clock at night, I'm a very accessible coach <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, she'd be like crying. Cause she's like, I'm just so overwhelmed. There's so much to get done. And I'd be like, all right, bring out a pen and paper. Let's get to it. What are the buckets? What's the priority? Okay. So you've got your board of directors who is waiting for a financial report. That's urgent today. You've got um, a proposal for a client or for an HR thing, and that's due in two weeks from now. So stop thinking about it now. We don't need to put that on the priority list for today. And so, and then when you have those bucket, like those projects that need to get done, you're just pulling them down into the lowest, lowest, lowest common denominator. And um, as a matter of fact, this was uh, this week's topic on my LinkedIn story theme was how to get over unstuck. And so which relates to overwhelm. So everyone just got a free counseling session on your mind mapping technique to get resilience. So that, that, that's wonderful. She's even got the dry erase board out. That's awesome. For, first time on the show, anyone doing that, by the way, hats oh. off. Uh, Dan, you have a question. Thank you, Dan. You're on the uh, rock the stage. Go for it. Well, I just, I, I, thanks Rich and Alice, you know, Allison's my rock star. I, I want to tell you everything that she is explaining to you. I put that into practice and I heard a wise woman once say, done is better than perfect. It may have been Allison. So she was encouraging me to get my first online course in the can. And I showed her the mess, the mind map mess that is my brain. And she said, Dan, you've got 45 mini courses, pick one and do it. And so that's, I, I just wanna, I just wanna say, thank you, Allison. But I'm also saying that is the way to break it down. And this, the perfectionism is really a form of procrastination because then we never have to be accountable for an imperfect product, right? Or an imperfect outcome. 
and the imperfect outcome is part of that's part of the journey that's that's when we've received that criticism that those comments those helpful comments so i just i wanted to say thank you for that because done is better than perfect and the course is not it's it's 90 percent. it's out it's there. an excellent that's course the, you should tell people what the course is don't get effed <laughs> again okay for people well, who just, have gone through uh you know maybe their employee is stolen from them right? Like, you know, and Dan teaches people how to think like an investigator. So thank you for that, Dan. And I know, uh, you know, that done is better than perfect. And I think perfectionism, I've tried to unpack that a little because I think it's all about fear. I think it's a misplaced emotion. It's uh, if I do this and I fail, then who am I, right? Like, what if it doesn't land? And an idea out in the ether is hope hopeful but if it's actually in the world then and it's it's complete then there's not a lot of hope if it already failed but there is always hope because we can always tweak and we can always tweak and you know i when i used to teach networking which is where i started in my speaking company and uh coaching business is like if somebody had 20 names on a list they would be frozen because they wouldn't want to make the calls because the truth is if they get to number 19 and then they call number 20 and they say, no, they're out of business. And so I think with our creative work and with a lot of our, our like shipping and, you know, I've been listening to Seth Godin a lot lately. He just did a really cool interview with uh, Tom Bilyeu and uh, he's talking about the book practice. Like you got to get it out there. Like show me your bad stuff. Right. And, and being comfortable with that. And that was very freeing for me to even hear. And, and I, I eat and live and think about this stuff all day, every day. So, uh, well, not all day. Let's go to squeeze in uh, another question here before we head for the finish line in a few moments. Anyone else have a question for Allison? Because again, and clearly Allison's going to come back in 2021, you guys. Clearly, we have far more to do on this. So don't worry, she will be coming back. Anyone want to unmute or say a quick little question here? Hi, Will. Go, Alan. Welcome. Oh, hi, Alan. Hey, thanks, thanks, uh, Allison. Really enjoyed your your enthusiasm and your your positive way of um, nurturing and uh, leading other people into changing their thoughts. Um, I actually, uh, I'm I'm curious as to if you can understand how, um, whenever you said that music does change your life, that. I just want to to see where uh, those thoughts are coming from. And now, the, is, is that a pre-programmed response? I mean, personally, for me, when I hear somebody even say the words, I want to hold your hand, I'm so old that I think Ed Sullivan show and the Beatles are on. So I always have that memory whenever I hear that. I, oh, yeah. I. So... <laughs> You know, anytime we put on music that has words or even a modality of music, aren't we taken way back into our pre-programming years of age one to six to validate what it was that we felt the first time we heard that? Oh, interesting. Okay. So I think it does take, I think you're right. Music takes us to memories. I'm going to encourage you when you're doing it, take it to a good memory or a good feeling. <laughs> Right. So this is where it's the mental discipline of what we choose to put in our mind. Correct. Right. And so I, I have playlists that are, you know, very much. And by the way, my playlist is everything from Eminem to country music stars to Richard Claterman and, um, you know, Harry Chapin. Right. Like, I mean, it's <laughs> all over the place. Um and, and so depending on the mood or what I need, I will choose music that will pump me up or well, I, I, that will get me into focus. But I, and I don't know the science behind it. You may, Alan, but the music does something inside of our brain that like is like we, we can forget what we read and we can remember a song that we've heard once, right? Like play a song. I can give you the lyrics, right? If they're singing, I'll sing along. So Probably Allison, off key. 
So, Allison, let me just chime in here because we're, we're, we're getting down to the finish line, but I want to make sure Alan does a lot with music, and he and I have had great conversation with this idea of going back or of picking the right song. I do have music, so when, when, I, when I come on stage, whatever stage it is, to get beyond myself, to get in the mood, I will find a couple special tunes that I will dial up, and it gets the energy. It gets it going because it does take me to something, to a memory, and that tool is huge, I think. And I think for, for your topic of resilience, the key, like you said, is to find the right one. Yeah. Know, know and have those ready in your play deck, your go-to. When, when you're hitting that wall, know you can call those in and they will do the job, right? Yeah. Like there are songs that might take you back to a past um, relationship. Like there's a whole album that I listened through with one of my exes right, that got me over a breakup years ago. I listened to one word. I'm not resilient. <laughs> I'm like a puddle on the ground, right? Uh, and it was, you. I'm teasing. It's not that bad, but um, years ago. And so you choose what is going to help you. And also having the expectation that what helped you yesterday isn't going to help you tomorrow, right? You got to find the right um, that's why I have such a variety of music and systems that I go to. Sometimes it's a walk, sometimes it's a dance party, sometimes it's sitting with my dog in the window and trying to figure out what he's looking at all day. Like it could be any, well, he's behind me now, but, um, you know, it, you've got to figure that out and that's the self-awareness piece. And I know we're, uh, we're done. I tried to give you tons of different ways to think about this and I, I hope I've stretched you a little bit and uh, given you some ideas and uh, I hope this is just the beginning of how um, uh, of us all knowing each other if we don't already know each other I'm going to put my link in yeah I was I was going to ask for Allison drop in your information because people can go link and you can connect with her uh, she is very accessible like she said which is a wonderful thing and uh, Allison your ultimate resilience program, or what would you like to tell us to better connect on the backside and follow you and have some fun afterwards with you? So there are two programs that I'm gonna encourage you to check out. Uh, the one is just released. It's called Creating the Ultimate Stress-Free Morning Routine. It takes my problem-solving framework and it puts it on the morning so you can get out the door on time, in flow, ready to go, without having to do all the guru 5 a.m. club that people talk about and stresses certain people out. Uh, then there's also the take back your weekends, right? Which is a time management course in many respects, but it's really everything we talked about today and very systematic. So those two are available online. I'm going to encourage you to go check those out on my website, alisongraham.co. And of course, if you know of a summit, a speaker, a podcast, or a company who needs some training, uh, that's what I do in my day to day and would love to, um, you know, do that and help inspire and give tools to teams. Take back your weekend. I can now figure out a better, better gift at the end of all this because of how we no longer have weekends. Everything is Groundhog Day for us. We're all just living seven days a week forever in our laptops and our virtual realms. I cannot figure out a better, better place to land the ship and say, get in there, learn that because we all need to set those healthier boundaries, figure that back out again. Uh, so wonderful. Uh, don't forget, before we wrap up here today, we're going to have Eli Marcus with us next Wednesday night, next Wednesday, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Eli is the connecting guru. He is the star to the stars. He has another nickname we'll talk about next week. But Eli is going to talk about how to make those connections to get you the guests for your, pop sh your podcast, your TV shows, your webinars. Uh, Eli is going to share some amazing gold in there. Then on the 14th, Monday the 14th, we're going to do a special show with the drummer, Mark Schulman. He's played for Pink, Fleetwood Mac, you name it, he's played for him. And he's going to talk about the fear that he had, a stage performance fear. Now he rocks the stage and he speaks on it, on how to overcome fear. And whether it's virtually or the physical stage, this is a huge topic. And so we're going to do a little rock and roll on Monday the 14th with Mark Schulman. Allison, what would be your final takeaways golden nuggets to wrap us up for this afternoon oh you want me to pick one here's the thing there is a lot of stuff that's going wrong in the world even so you don't have to react to it in a stressful way and i sincerely hope that something i've said today is going to help you have a better less stressful day today than you did yesterday so thank you let's keep in touch and uh Go on, step into your brilliance.
without the stress. Love it. So that's going to do it for this afternoon. Again, this is a special edition of How the Rock the Virtual Stage. You can always find our playbacks right now. They're on YouTube. Go find YouTube. Subscribe to that. But they are all going to C-Suite TV. All the shows, past and present, are going to C-Suite. Coming up in 2021, we have some amazing new announcements, some relationship and partnership that are going to be coming in the pipeline. They're going to really add value to you post-show event stuff. So please follow like on Eventbrite. And come back next week, Wednesday night, 8 o'clock Eastern time. We're going to rock the stage again with Eli Marcus. So until then, be safe. Have a great week. Be resilient. God bless. Take care, everybody. We'll see you next time.